Hey guys, this video is brought to you by Froala, a beautiful lightweight WYSIWYG HTML editor written in JavaScript. Froala editor's rich editing capability provides both simple and complex features for all types of use cases. It is easy to integrate into your existing tech stack, and I really enjoy using this editor in my projects since they have extensive documentation filled with tons of examples and code snippets I can easily reuse. Getting started with Froala is simple and very intuitive. So head on over to froala.com to download your free trial today. What's up, everybody? And welcome to another JavaScript Nuggets video where we cover nifty JavaScript topics that will come in handy when working on various JavaScript apps. And today we're going to talk about reduce, which arguably is the most powerful array method since if we really wanted to, we could replace filter and find with just reduce. But also, since that is the case, since it is the most powerful, it is also a bit more complicated. So just keep that in mind while you're tackling reduce. Now, in our first reduce video, we will take a look at somewhat traditional example where we sum up the values. And once we understand the basics, we will explore some more interesting use cases of reduce. So what is reduce? And why do we want to use it? Well, essentially, similarly to map filter for each, and uh, all the good array methods, we iterate over our array, and then we get a callback function. Now the difference between the maps and filters of the world and reduce is the fact that reduce reduces our array to a single value. Now, what's really cool is that that single value could be anything. It can be a number, it could be an array, and it can be a object. And that's why, of course, it makes the reduce so powerful. Now, what's also interesting that in reduce, in a callback function, we pass in two parameters. First parameter is the total of all calculations. Now, a common name practice is calling it accumulator. But again, call this orange, call this Uncle Bobby, call this total, wherever you would want. In my case, I'm going to call this total. And then the second parameter is that current value, that current iteration. Because again, remember, we're iterating over our array. And in our example, our task is following, where I have the array by the name of staff, and then I have names, ages, positions, and all that. But what I'm looking for is the salary. So I would want to calculate the daily salary. For example, Bob gets 100 and then Anna, because she's an intern, gets only $10. And I would want to calculate, well, what is my total daily? And of course, in order to set that up, I'm going to start by setting up a new variable. And I'll call this daily total. Now, let me spin up my Kyoko first. And then once I have that in place, now set it equal to my array. And then like I said, we're using the reduce, then we have the callback function. But not only we need to pass in callback function, we need to pass in that initial value. So what I would want to return eventually from my reduce, whether that is array, whether that is an object, or in our case, that is the number. So in this case, we need to add a comma. And then since I would want to start with zero, I'm going to pass in zero. Please keep in mind, I can pass in here 200. That just means that my initial value will be 200. So of course, that will be added to all my values. Now I'll start with a zero. And then of course, I have my callback function. And then like I said, two parameters, first one, a lot of times called accumulator, but we can call it, for example, total, which is going to be my case, and then that current item. So since I have people though, I'm just going to call this person. All right. Now what's really, 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 and I can say another 10 times really important is to always return a total. Otherwise, your functionality will break. So in this case, always, always start with return. And then whatever is the name of that first parameter, always return it. Otherwise, it's just not going to make sense. So we go with log. Let's just right away console log. What do we have as far as our daily total? 
and then at the moment, as you can see, is zero. But if I'll change this, to, for example, 200, and of course, my initial value will be 200. And then just so we all are on the same page, let's just console log total. So that's going to give me a total. And then since I know that I'm accessing each and every person, let's also right away console log person and then dot salary. And you can see that in each iteration, I'm accessing. So the first one is 100, then 300, 400, and 10. And now, of course, we just need to decide, hey, what is happening over here? How we can add those values together? And simply what I would want, since I have my total, I'm just going to say that in each iteration, I'm going to say plus equals, and then whatever is that salary. So we go here with the salary. So now notice something interesting, where the first iteration, this is zero. Why this is zero? Well, it is zero because my initial value is zero, correct? Now, what is the salary here? That is 100. So on line 17, we're adding them together, right? So I have my total and I have my person salary. Now, once I start that second iteration, what do you see here as my total value? That is already 100 because we added them together, correct? So the salary is 300 in a second iteration. Again, we add them together. So now when I start my third iteration, this is already 400. And then the same thing, I have 400 in my salary over here in the third iteration. And then in the fourth one, we already have 800 because we added whatever was our total to whatever is that current salary. And of course, at the end, we just add in 10. And that's why we have this total of 810. Now let me showcase that if you won't return total, the first time you get a zero, awesome. Then you have 100. But since you don't return it, remember from functions whether we return by default, undefined, correct? Well, you cannot sum up 100 with undefined. It's just not going to work. That's why it is undefined. And then, as you can see here, you have a big fat mess. So always, always return total. And also, like I said, you're not limited to using zero. For example, I'm going to say that. I have some other expenses. So it's going to be 1000, for example. And as you can see, we just start with 1000. And then we follow the same steps, where as a result, it is 1810. So those are the basics of a reduce function in JavaScript.